I'm Keeve. I'm Carrie. Today we are very happy to be interviewing Gene Pritzker. A great guitarist. And composer. And Gene once entered a competition, kind of like the British Bake Off. Or the Iron Chef. Where he had a few hours to write a piece for an ensemble he didn't know until he got into the room. Kind of like a British Bake Off when they're like, you have two hours to make, what are some things they make? That's the technical challenge. The right. technical challenge of British Bake Off, our favorite show. Did I say that already? So we can't wait to hear about that. And how hard he works at composition every day. Let's welcome Gene Pritzker. I give you my love More precious than money Welcome to the show. Oh, shall we on already? <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna have to edit it's you already. It's live. It's lit. We've got to edit it as we go. Well, I'm glad I put my shirt on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you put your pants on. <laughs> you don't know that. You don't know that, sir. <laughs> You're the composer that you have an idea and you just write. And uh, I think a lot of composers are probably like, how does he not have a block? How do you write so quickly? How do you produce so much? I actually don't write quickly. I just, I just work a lot. But I'm really, I'm like up at five and I work till like 12, like every day or whatever. Some people like to work at night, which for me is the, like right now I'm so brain dead. I don't know how I'm talking. <laughs> if I had to write some music right now. And sometimes I have orchestration deadlines and I have to work in the night and I literally have to force myself. It's the worst. I, I, can't, I can't. My brain doesn't work. I'm done. So early in the morning, I get up five in the morning, six in the morning. It's beautiful and just I'm working and things flow and it's just like no problems yet. <laughs> Haven't yeah. thought about yet a coffee, whatever. Uh, but I mean, that's just for me. But also for me, before I start a piece of music, it's, it's completely finished. I just don't know any of the notes or rhythms or anything like that. <laughs> well, I, rem I remember once you were on like that, that, game show right where you had <laughs> it was a game show it was fun. <laughs> you know it was like a cooking show but for composition we had to write a piece of uh they didn't tell us the ensemble and they locked us in a room and we got the thing and the ensemble happened to be it was bass viola and cello and we all wrote a piece in three hours and i got i think i got third place i couldn't believe it and people love my piece that i still like the piece i wrote actually it's, it's i really, love that no i mean yeah. you are the master at that like get, <laughs> go write for this and go it was really fun you just got to meet compose and we kind of you know it's friendly competition. There was no yeah. you know, cutthroat. <laughs> okay, now, Gene Pritzker, if I were to ask you to write a couple of musicians, a theme song, oh. uh, four seconds, go. <laughs> Is it? Because yeah, it's That's kind it. of like a <laughs> contemplative thing. <laughs> Sebastian's age. Sebastian mm. is his son, by the way. Yes, and uh, he's 16. Well, actually, at 16, I the composition bug bit me already. I was in my high school music pre-college as a classical guitar major and quickly realized I'm not sitting around learning other people's music, <laughs> which I can't memorize and, and, and like, I don't know, whatever. I, I had a little composition class and... and I was really, that was it, you know, so I, I really, guitar was becoming secondary and composing was becoming the main thing, so, and, and Sebastian's doing that too a little bit now, I mean, a lot, he's actually, 
writing and producing and he has a he has a brand new video out that I just shared. Uh, uh, it's called New York, New York. Okay. <laughs> and it's, called, it's in Russian, and he sings in Russian with kind of Armenian beats. He's into Armenian music now, Russian Armenian. The hit. New York, New York, New York, любимый город наш. Всемирный народ у нас с утра до вечера просто класс. New York, New York, New York, любимый город наш. Всемирный народ у нас с утра до вечера просто класс. New York, New York. So you, you are not only a composer, but you also run a composer's collective. So can you yes. talk a little bit about what that entails and what that involves? Uh, so Composer's Concordance has been around for 38 years. We produce about 30 plus concerts a year. Last year, a little less because something happened. I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and now we're trying to reschedule all those concerts. So actually, we have already like seven concerts booked. Uh, for this first, you know, and we're just at this point doing them at uh, salons, uh, like my friend Mark Kastabi's townhouse and a couple of rehearsal studios. There's no venue, so what we got to do what we got to do. Uh, yeah, but we, you know, we premiere over 100 composers a year, um, and it's a collective of composers that, well, frankly, that I like. Tell us uh, a little bit about the salon series that you have going on right now. Yeah, so, you know, during the pandemic, Nothing was going on, so we started a thing. Uh, uh, we did five concerts called Social Bubble Concerts. I heard about this thing when my friend said, oh, there's these in New York social bubbles where people who know they're, you know, not positive for COVID get together and drink. I'm like, well, well let's take that to a concert level. So I would invite about 15, and I invited you once. You couldn't do it. Uh, 10 to 15 friends of mine who have been quarantined who are pretty sure that they're cool <laughs> uh, musicians. And we put a concert on for ourselves with like 15 cameras going at the same time. Uh, so we did like five of those, uh, uh, four of them at my friend Mark Kostavi's townhouse. And one on the, my friend Robert Ford has this beautiful roof in um, Wall Street. And we were on the roof. There was only five or six of us on the roof. And we played and it was like the background of Wall Street. It was very nice. Was oh, nice. Uh, but yeah, but now, but now we're doing actually real concerts with real audience, even though small. So we just did one for like a 10 person audience. But with the band and the audience, we had like 25 people and it was a nice party. It was great. Two, three, four. Straight for films. I know you've yeah, done yeah. quite a bit of that. And uh, tell us about that. Uh, when I went to school as a composer, you know, movie music was for me always this utilitarian thing, which for me is really the opposite of what I do. I always tell people I'm a terrible movie composer. If I not that I ever write movies, but sometimes what I do, it's the hardest thing because you're supposed to write something to support something else. And my music is the exact opposite. When I write, it's like everything else becomes. <laughs> my head background like this is the the thing that you should be focused on even when i collaborate in opera or whatever you know so for me movies and music it's uh but these guys i met they happened to be we did this big movie called perfume through christian and Absol ensemble and when they heard me do christian said oh let gene orchestrate they had their hollywood cats whatever and i did some orchestration and after that they fired everybody and just kept me for like we could all we only work from gene from now on uh, so yeah, I've been working a lot with them and we're in the middle of this huge big project, which I can't talk about, but the big thing that's happening for the past five years is this thing called Babylon Berlin, which is on Netflix, and in Germany it's the biggest thing that ever happened to TV. It's basically, it's cra they're, they're Babylon Berlin crazy there. I mean, it was like Game of Thrones, it's kind of like that. What know. was that other show that you did too that was on for a few seasons? Uh, yeah, it was called Sense Eight. So that one oh. is is the with the Wachowskis. So they uh, yeah. So they had and that was like a really it was it was the most expensive thing Netflix ever did. So it got canceled because they couldn't afford it. Not because they had a huge fan base and the fans they rebelled and they had to do a two hour like goodbye like episode because <laughs> they canceled it. But it was because it, it's like eight stories at one in at one time in eight different country locations. So they had like eight crews working in like all around the world to say it was very expensive to me <laughs> so but it, it's a good show I, I like it There's, so uh, when you have all these projects on your desk and in your head you know do you do you feel like you have to prioritize them yeah I, you know well i mean I, of course it's usually deadline prioritizes yeah. <laughs> deadlines right now it's so weird like i'm working on something for july as i said because there's no 
I mean, all the concerts that I have, things are written for. So I don't really have so many deadlines. And all these projects got moved, and there's no deadline. So I'm just, like, picking something that I could actually do that I know there's a concert, which just happens to be July. Uh, so, but, you know, I'm just constantly working and just seeing what's, what's due next. And sometimes, like, in movies especially, sometimes the deadlines are ridiculous. Like, you know, I have to do, like, 40 orchestrations in, like, two weeks. Oh, everything's due in two weeks, Gene. Here's the orchestrations. Oh, okay. And I, you know, and that's when I'm, like, actually have to work at night, which... I hate, but, like, there's no way to finish it. <laughs> but uh, for this big project, we got the chance to, because it's Warner Brothers, and we got a chance to go to Abbey Road, which is actually, so, you know, whatever, Abbey Road, famous studio, but actually it's a state-of-the-art, like, one of the best studios I've ever been to. Not because it's Abbey Road or Beatles, none of that. It's just real, the real deal, like, really amazing. One thing we, we're going to do soon for this big project, which we've never done because it's too expensive, but since it's Warner Brothers and we have a lot of money, so yeah. we have to record for this big project. We have to record in Hollywood with one of the big Hollywood orchestras, or that's just Union. You can't release this movie without it. It doesn't matter how much it costs. We don't care because they're paying for it. So we get, we get a sooner or later. I think we're supposed to do it now, but obviously everything got moved. So sooner or later, we're going to go over there. Have you recorded in any of those big studios in, in Hollywood? No, I, I've never, no. I never. I mean, I really don't work in Hollywood. You know, I really work with this one team, and they do their movies wherever, you know, but... Uh, because really, the only movies that are left are like superhero movies for the yeah. right? <laughs> for those, but you know, the five hundred million dollar budget, whatever it is. Thank you. You are the master composer. We're very excited to have you on the show. Thank you. I've been enjoying your videos. I've been watching them. They're great. They're very fun. All right, guys. Thanks. Thanks.